Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. The skies in Melbourne, Australia are clearing. More natural weather means nature can thrive. We'll show you the huge difference it's making with plants and wildlife. A landslide in North Carolina forces the closure of this road. And authorities say it could take two months to reopen. We'll show you what happened. And we'll chat with this mom who created an online resource to help parents and caregivers trust their children's inner wisdom. There's a housing crisis in Germany. Homelessness has skyrocketed due to poor decisions by the government. And a recent study in the U.S. shows many cancer drugs are being approved, even though there's no proof of their effectiveness. Who's approving these drugs? And how can they be removed? This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. The incredible ability of nature to heal restore and rejuvenate is truly inspiring. UNN Field Messenger Helen shows us how just three weeks of favorable weather can yield abundant fruits, flowers, and honey. Beautiful beings, this is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature for United Network News with some good news. Looky here. Since we've had natural skies, natural weather, puffy clouds and not all those straight lines and blue three weeks now I noticed it before like a day before you had it on the news Kim because I'd been photographing the skies every day and so what's happening is we have tomatoes ripening yay and amongst the foliage there's more ripening happening to five months, over five months of no fruit on my capsicum. I've got little fruits as well. Yep. Oh wow! <gasps> can I we go. Can, do I get to eat that? Yeah 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 yeah. Banging the bees off the honeycomb. <laughs> Off you go, that's it. <laughs> In the five months since spring began when the sun is normally out, the hive was losing weight and most hives around here had to be fed with sugar to keep the bees alive. And then in the three weeks since we had natural weather, it's astounding that they've produced about three kilos of like extra honey on top of their own needs. Sunflowers have opened and the Pumpkins have got lots of flowers, so it's lovely to give you a positive report. So may you enjoy the natural weather and nature flourishing where you are in the world. Bye. A landslide in Marshall, North Carolina, has damaged a local roadway, requiring up to two months for repairs by the local Department of Transportation. UNN Field Messenger Godfrey reports from the scene. Hello, this is Godfrey Cavers reporting from uh, Marshall in, on the Baileys Branch road closure. It looks like we need to wait um, up to two months um, for the road to be fixed uh, from the landslide that happened two weeks ago. Um, we've got a 20 minute uh, detour just to get to downtown, which would normally take five minutes. Um, we residents think this is unacceptable. So here is the road that goes down to Marshall, which is over here across the bridge. 
and um, this is the landslide. So this tree down there and then there's this great big hole is here and this whole area just came down. That's, that's pretty crazy. So as you can see, we have a barrier right across the road this time. And there's the bulldozer, my daughter. And yeah, so they're not. And there's the other barrier that we were going around earlier on. So in the restoration, let's see how fast we can get it done in the future. All right. Godfrey Cavers reporting from Marshall, Uni um, North Carolina, USA, uh, for United Network News. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with the electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature, and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. In the new earth, all of humanity is valued, regardless of their experience or age. And that includes our children, who are now emerging as our greatest teachers. Belinda Tung noticed this with her own child. She learned to be brave and trust her child's wisdom, which led her to create her online resource, Perfect Child, a support system to help us deprogram from cultural and societal norms. So I'm excited to introduce you guys to Belinda. Belinda, thanks so much for being with us today. And I'm really excited to talk to you because, you know, as we go on our journey of discovery, we discover a lot of different things. And some things really stay with us because they're really important to us, like being a parent and learning how to parent and how to just support our children. And I think you have an incredible success story because you not only got some information, but you ran with it. <laughs> and not only that, but you're helping other people on their paths of discovery as well. So, so tell us a little bit about the perfect child. What is it? So I like to describe Perfect Child as a resource for parents um, and anyone working with children. It's the it's founded on the mission of changing the paradigm of childhood so that every child is met with awe and reverence. Mm. I feel like as a mother, you know, when I had my child and just being around other parents, you know, recognizing that, wow, we, we often spend a lot of time comparing our kids to other kids or, or to ourselves when we're a certain age. And a lot of times when I look at where humanity is, you know, I feel like we can 
evolve humanity in a positive way if we just meet the children where they're at. And when we meet them with awe and reverence, what that means is like looking at your child through rose colored glasses, Mm. right? Because every soul that incarnates onto this world, onto this earth is a light. Yeah. And we we tend as parents to dim our children's light. And I'm not quite sure why I found myself doing it to my own child. And I didn't want that. And so it just was a lot of like working like, oh, my gosh, like I have so much work to do so that I can meet my child and not have her grow up in a system or in an environment where she's being made to feel less than. Yeah. And so that's sort of my mission of perfect child. And that's why the website is called perfect child because every child is perfect. Yeah. So what do you do then? Do you go out, you, you talk to people, you interview people, tell people what to expect if they were to go check out your website. So the first thing that you'll expect when you jump on my website is, you know, I simply state your child is not broken. The system is Mm. because that is where I'm at right now. And what I do is I interview wisdom keepers. I call them wisdom keepers because We're all wisdom keepers. And just depending on where we are in our journey, you know, we have different levels of wisdom that we share with our community, with our friends, with our family. And these wisdom keepers um, hold wisdom that amplify the light within. And so as a parent, when you come in, what you'll find is you'll find people that talk about birthing, how birthing can be a beautiful revelation and empower uh, empowering experience for women right and raising our children in a way where where their light is amplified right we're not we're not putting on them things we don't feel like we need to fill them with things there's wisdom keepers that talk about that about what it means to have your child live in a self-directed environment right and then as parents what we're finding is that we are not only um, trying to parent our children, right? We, in, in doing that in a conscious, more conscious manner, we're finding that we need to parent ourselves, our own inner children, our own mm-hmm. inner child. And then because of the age group that we often find ourselves in, our parents are aging. And so we have to kind of parent them too. So it's this whole journey of self-reflection. And so the people that I interview are people who have walked the path and who have seen a different way, who step away from fear and are, and are sovereign and um, lit up beings. And it's just to inspire people that like, these are people that, that hold wisdom. And if it resonates with you, you know, call them up, book a session, or just hear the testimonial stories of people who have worked with this, these wisdom keepers who have done things so that we can see the path has already been set. We just weren't aware. Yeah. I love that you call them wisdom keepers because that's kind of how I view parents in general. It's like you you gain this experience. You may not have a degree or whatever, and who really cares about all of that, but you have this valuable experience that you can share with other people. And that's what we're going to be doing. That's what Lynn and I are going to be doing on these segments for New Earth is just sharing what we've learned, what Belinda has learned, you know, just through her own experience or perhaps, you know, through some of these interviews that you were talking about and myself as well. You know, I've got four kids. I've kind of been there, done that in some areas and in other areas, I'm just learning, I'm just growing, Mm -hmm. but it's by sharing this information that we can all reach that next level, whatever that is, whatever that growth that we need to, you know, that level that we need to reach. Yeah. It's by doing it together. So I love that you're, you're doing this. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and of course we, we need community. This is, hard work and it seems very lonely sometimes but when when we create this community we find that so many people are in the same boat as us yep in an increasingly digital world taking time to understand the safety features and terms of the technology children are using online can help protect them and establish healthy screen time boundaries Many telephone company websites now have sections with safety tips and recommendations for parents on handling the issue of what is or isn't acceptable online and how much media time is enough. They give details of the built-in parental controls that exist on many devices and apps to manage screen time, block inappropriate content, and monitor who youngsters are talking to online. 
There was often advice from experts who were also parents on alerting youngsters to the risks of giving too much personal information to strangers online. With the help of these free resources, adults can help children develop safe and healthy tech habits that will last a lifetime. A recent study conducted in Norway has revealed the neurological benefits of handwriting compared to typing. The researchers measured brainwave data as participants were prompted to write or type words displayed on a screen. Patterns in the brain were found to be significantly more elaborate when participants engaged in handwriting rather than typing. They discovered neural networks in the brain showed more connectivity between different regions when individuals write by hand. This enhanced brain connectivity plays a vital role in memory building and information encoding. Writing by hand has also been associated with spelling accuracy and memory recall, particularly for dyslexic individuals. These researchers emphasize the importance of providing students with opportunities to write by hand to ensure better learning outcomes. Acupressure is an established technique that offers a free alternative to pain relief medicine. Key points on the body are pressed to release muscle tension and stimulate natural life force healing. It is safe and easy to practice on yourself and others. There are no side effects and it can be done anywhere, anytime, without equipment or medicines. The focus is on resolving pain and discomfort before they can lead to greater physical imbalance. Acupressure can assist with relief of headaches, eye strain, joint pain, anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, and nausea. Stimulating the acupressure points by lightly pressing them releases endorphins, the body's natural painkiller. The technique is so quick and simple that it can also be taught to children. By relaxing muscles and increasing circulation, acupressure is a great support in maintaining good health and body balance, which is available for all to try. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia, Denmark, Canada, Uganda, from Atlanta, in Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. The housing crisis in Germany is escalating, impacting citizens across all social classes, with more individuals struggling to find affordable housing. The German Tenants Association in Bonn reports a record surge in memberships as people face evictions and increasing rents. Homelessness has skyrocketed with an estimated 3,500 homeless in the region, a tenfold increase from previous years. The federal government's past decisions to sell thousands of apartments to private investors, coupled with a cutback in social housing construction, have worsened the shortage. The government attempted to stabilize rent prices through a rent freeze until 2029, but loopholes remain, allowing landlords to bypass regulations. Experts want more stringent regulations and look toward models in Austria and Switzerland for sustainable solutions. British small businesses, especially those in the food and agricultural sectors, are struggling with increasing challenges due to new Brexit-induced import control measures. Wholesalers and trade associations say the mounting bureaucracy and fees are burdensome and are pushing EU exporters to halt their operations within the UK. These regulations include phytosanitary certificates, which are plant passports, and a new common user charge for importing animal products and certain plants. 
The added financial strain comes at a critical time when the UK, facing potential food shortages due to poor harvests, is increasingly reliant on imports. Small retailers, farmers, and wholesalers are concerned about the sustainability of their operations, with many fearing the loss of unique products and the viability of their businesses. The government insists the charges are meant to cover the cost of new border facilities and protect the country's biosecurity. A recent study shows only 1% of UK primary school teachers believe their students have an adequate understanding of financial literacy. Despite financial education being part of the curriculum in local authority-run secondary schools since 2014, its integration into non-core subjects like citizenship has limited its effectiveness. The report suggests financial literacy is more accessible to students from ad advantaged backgrounds, recommending a whole school approach to match standards in countries like Finland and New Zealand. Teachers and campaigners argue introducing financial literacy early in school could help improve children's future well-being, wealth accumulation, and reduce their vulnerability to fraud and debt. The government insists primary school math provides a solid financial understanding foundation, but many argue this is insufficient. A recent report in the U.S. has revealed a significant increase in online child sexual exploitation, now increasingly involving artificial intelligence. More than 36 million instances of child abuse were reported in 2023, marking a 12% increase from the previous year. The abuse is evolving, with predators using AI to create or manipulate images and videos, a trend that poses significant challenges for identifying real victims. Families are facing the devastation of seeing their children's images misused in deep fakes, and some are even financially extorted by criminals, demanding money in return for not distributing such images. The majority of child sexual abuse material reported was hosted outside of the U.S., highlighting the global nature of this crisis. New regulations under the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act are set to take effect on June 18th. The regulations mandate U.S. employers with 15 or more employees to provide reasonable accommodations for pregnancy, childbirth, and related medical conditions, including abortion. This decision is a critical step toward ensuring workplace equity and safety for pregnant employees who have long faced discrimination and inadequate protections. It empowers women, particularly those in low-wage jobs, by allowing necessary modifications, such as time off for medical appointments or lighter duties without risking their employment. The inclusion of abortion as a condition requiring accommodations has sparked debate with anti-abortion activists criticizing the move, while supporters argue it is essential for women's rights. There are new concerns about the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA's, fast-track approval program for cancer drugs. This program, aimed at giving patients quicker access to promising treatments, often fails to confirm the effectiveness of these drugs post-approval. Research indicates many cancer drugs approved rapidly from 2013 to 2017 did not show significant benefits in later trials. This leaves patients and their families facing uncertainty about treatment effectiveness. With 63% of these drugs receiving regular approval without solid proof of benefit, there are growing concerns and questions about the clarity and communication between doctors and patients concerning expected outcomes. Recent laws aim to enhance the FDA's authority to ensure ineffective drugs can be withdrawn faster. The U.S. market for functional beverages, drinks that offer health benefits beyond basic nutrition, has seen a significant surge. These beverages, including everything from prebiotic sodas to non-alcohol options, aim to cater to a growing consumer interest in healthier lifestyles. 
Sales of certain functional beverages have more than tripled, contributing to around 10% of the total non-alcoholic beverage market. Despite their popularity, some experts caution against relying too heavily on these drinks for health benefits, suggesting a balanced diet is preferable. The market's expansion has led to a rise in price, potentially affecting consumer purchasing habits. Critics argue the trend may eventually revert to simpler, traditional drinks as consumers seek clarity within an overcrowded market. <clears throat> Australians are increasingly targeted by complex investment scams, losing large amounts of money to global operations. These scams lure victims with promises of high returns, only to trap them in schemes and drain their finances. Initially, victims can withdraw small amounts, building trust. As they invest more, scammers restrict withdrawals using panic-inducing tactics to demand more money. The shift toward cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin, adds to the complexity, rendering the recovery of funds nearly impossible. Scammers use fast, less regulated overseas transfers, making victims feel powerless as they're denied access to their funds. Attempts to recover losses through banks and consumer agencies often fail, even after reporting to authorities. The impact, particularly on retirees and pensioners, is devastating both financially and emotionally. Brazil has announced that travelers from the US, Canada and Australia have some additional restrictions when obtaining a visa for entry starting April 2025. To apply for a visa, visitors must demonstrate financial capability by presenting bank statements or pay stubs with those lacking a minimum of $2,000 in their accounts needing a financial sponsor. This change comes as part of Brazil's effort to ensure a mutual exchange and travel relations regulations, mirroring visa requirements Brazilians face when traveling to these countries. Americans accustomed to visa-free entry since 2019 will face a new set of challenges, including a detailed application process and a fee for a 10-year multiple entry visa. The U.S. State Department has issued a travel advisory urging caution due to crime rates, especially near Brazil's borders with neighboring countries. Hundreds of refugees from the Central African Republic have chosen to return home from a refugee camp in Eastern Cameroon, despite ongoing conflict. The violence began in 2013, displacing more than a fifth of the Central African Republic's population, with many seeking safety across borders. Now, some refugees are voluntarily choosing to go back, driven by desires to rebuild their lives and contribute to the country's recovery. Among them are students with aspirations of continuing their education and pursuing careers aimed at contributing to societal healing and justice. Others remain too fearful to return due to traumatic experiences, including systematic violence by armed groups. These survivors, in hopes of making a difference, envision futures where they can support those similarly affected by the conflict. In Zimbabwe, about 75% of the workforce, mainly informal traders, are refusing the local currency because of its failing value. This shift away from the Zimbabwean dollar comes ahead of the anticipated introduction of the new gold-backed currency, the ZIG. The launch, initially scheduled for April 8th, has been postponed to the end of the month, leading to the US dollar's increased dominance in the market. Residents express concerns over the rapid devaluation of their savings, particularly those assigned for essential expenses such as education. The introduction of the ZIG currency aims to stabilize the economy and curb ongoing inflation. However, the population remains skeptical about its effectiveness and the government's commitment to economic discipline.
In Singapore, a set of guidelines has been rolled out to help employers and employees negotiate flexible work arrangements more effectively. The initiative aimed at promoting a better work-life balance mandates employers to respond to flexible work arrangements requests within two months. These requests can cover changes in work hours or location, among others, and are not limited to caregiving duties. If rejected, employers must provide business-related reasons. The move is seen as particularly beneficial in the current tight labor market, encouraging companies to be more accommodating to attract and retain talent. For those facing challenges in negotiations, training and resources will be available from May of 2024 to support the adoption of flexible work arrangements. In India, the growing influence of digital platforms like YouTube for news dissemination highlights a transformation in the country's media landscape. Independent journalists and digital news outlets are increasingly turning to these platforms to escape a news environment seen as traditional and polarized. However, the government's recent moves to amend media laws and control online content signal a clampdown on digital freedom. The removal of certain YouTube channels and social media accounts under unclear circumstances and the blocking of content critical of the government have raised alarms over censorship and self-censorship amongst digital content creators. The Supreme Court's recent decision to halt the government's fake news identification initiative signals some resistance to these tightening controls. Mount Everest, the world's highest peak, faces an escalating environmental crisis due to climbers leaving behind vast amounts of waste. Reports show with the annual influx of climbers, approximately 70 tons of garbage, including a substantial amount of human waste, is left at Everest base camp each spring, creating a hazardous and unpleasant environment. This accumulation not only detracts from the natural beauty of the region, but also poses serious health risks as the waste becomes exposed with the melting snow. Despite regulations requiring mountaineering teams to manage their waste, enforcement has been lax with government liaison officers often failing to monitor the situation effectively. Since 2019, the Nepal Army in collaboration with various organizations has led cleanup campaigns, removing around 110 tons of waste, but the challenge persists. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of The Guardian. The fight for deep state control of planet Earth continues with very little time left. Will they hold to their agreement? Tensions in the Middle East seem to have slowed down. All of this and more in today's World Situation Report. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hello, Kim. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. How are things going today? You know, uh... It's been interesting, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So by uh, the evening of Monday, it appears that the SSP, global headquarters, militaries, everybody on the other side that's mm -hmm. on the chopping block right now, uh, asked for 48 hours uh, from the cartels okay. with conditions on both sides. So pretty hefty conditions on both ends. 
the cartel had to turn over uh, some of the things that they built for themselves, let's just say networks and those types of things for 48 hours so that they, because they basically whined and said they really don't have any systems left. They don't have any networks left. They don't have any. So, um, and during their complaining, uh, they got to uh, get a few things for a short period of time on the condition that if this doesn't work out by end of day or sundown uh, ish eastern standard time uh that they would actually uh completely uh turn themselves over at to the whims of the cartels what that means is uh they would take orders from them no one else uh, they would, yep, and they every single facility that they have, militaries, everything in their downline would then get turned over to their control fully. And that's never happened before because it seems like the cartels were, you know, on the totem pole, the cartels were lower, right? They were taking orders from these people, right? And you're talking about yeah. kind of a role reversal. And the silent circle and, yes, that is yeah. correct. So that is where it stands right now. Well, what did that do for me? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, with their new tools, which, you know, there wasn't a whole lot left anyway um, that they could do anything with, but it did give them eyes to see some things. Uh, you could say that they have their own kind of intelligence system. It wouldn't give them access to anything, but they definitely had a little more eyes to see. Uh, mm -hmm. for a short period of time, uh, they have been off the charts losing their mind. Like uh, what? what does that look like? Um, it looks like a tremendous amount of hacking. It looks like attempts to find anything and everything possible, in not only in this galaxy, but in the multiverse that they could possibly access using this communication line. Uh, they did lead us to a few places left on Earth where there was a few things uh, that we needed to clean up. Nothing major, uh, but uh, these are things they don't need to have. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, in addition to the fact that I'm getting ridiculous phone calls, um, everybody's looking for someone that can control and own the golden goose. Uh, there's a lot of threats, uh, a lot of attacks, uh, a lot of requests. Uh, I call them requests because that's a nice word mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, for them. Uh, and a lot of speculation and a lot of fear going out into the media. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of threats, like for example, one is that the government is going to freeze uh, your bank accounts and not allow withdrawals uh, from your bank accounts due to a low amount of uh, money or currency in circulation. Uh, this was an actual threat for me you know, basically mm -hmm. saying that, you know, even if you deposit, we're not going to let you withdraw it. However, they must have forgotten they have no capacity to actually perform this function in the financial system. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were hoping they were going to get something back. Um, maybe they thought they could use this mm, intelligence system, you know, normal intelligence type system uh, that the cartels use to access something, but that is not really what it was for. It was mainly for their own protection, you know, moving things around and, mm -hmm. you know, look where to look, where not to look, where to go, where not to go. That was kind of what it was always used for. So I, um, <clears throat> I do not believe at this moment in time they have any capacity to actually perform this function, even if they passed a law and gave the information out over mainstream media, uh, if you are not a watcher of the news, you wouldn't know none the wiser. You'd walk in there and you'd take your money out and that would be the end of that. You know, mm -hmm. you'd go to an ATM machine or, you know, you'd use your debit card. You you wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, but the their intention here is to cause mass hysteria 
worldwide uh, and a run on the banks created by you. So I just wanted to let you know that that is where I see that going. I've had a lot of questions uh, sent to me on Telegram and a few other places asking about that, but they do not have the capacity to actually perform this function. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Middle East. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of chatter, a lot of talk in the news. Uh, we have yet to see any major movements from either party, you know, allegedly we're talking about Israel and Iran here, also possibly Lebanon, uh, as I believe there is a lot of confusion. Right now, operatives that have set up this war are, uh, there is a hold on who is actually in charge. So during this time, I believe that the downline, this is what I'm hearing, that the downline here is not allowed to move either direction, not for the cartel side mm -hmm. and not for the SSP, Global Headquarter, Langley 5, ETAL, Black Nobility, Silent Circle side. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that they are in a holding pattern until this evening. Okay. Not able to act on either side. Which is why we haven't seen Israel retaliate. In the They're news. talking about retaliating. They're talking about it. They have threatened to retaliate. Sure. Uh, there's also no money uh, should they retaliate. Uh, there is some talk about Russia uh, making a deal recently in the last 48 hours with Iran to provide Iran with some nuclear uh, not nuclear, sorry, uh, with some weaponry. I've seen you know, it. they talked about aircraft, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, you see Putin there shaking hands and, you know, dead people talking to dead people. And uh, I don't see that at this moment uh, that that is going to happen unless the oil cartels received the money that they are due, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, if their money is actually laundered, mm -hmm. you know, then they could possibly buy some, some weaponry and that kind of thing. But I don't see that happening because the coffers there, don't get me wrong, um, you know, Iran definitely has some money. There's some wealthy people in Iran mm -hmm. that have partake uh, partaken in the uh, oil cartels and other cartels coming uh, in as part of the cartels, I should say, in Iran. But I don't think anybody is willing to spend their own personal money yeah. uh, at the moment. So I don't see, even though it's a lot, uh, what I would more uh, is from a government standpoint is where I would look. And I don't see them having a tremendous amount of wealth at this moment since the pipeline kind of dried up. Mm -hmm. um, so they're owed a lot of money too. Uh, so the who is in charge is a big factor there. Uh, and the, there is no money. You know, the, all the weapons and everything else that they sent over there, all the operations that they ran, uh, there is currently no money. So they're waiting to see which side is going to pay them. That's a part of it. Now, on Monday night, uh, there was a whole lot of movement of people asking to go to uh, safe houses around the world, CIA agency run safe houses. Uh, there was a whole lot of movement of people into Cheyenne, uh, trying to get into Cheyenne for safety and security. Uh, What's the concern there, Kim? Like, who are they running from? The cartel? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, and I believe that was when somebody stepped up and, and cut a deal. And they all agreed. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> they needed to buy, buy themselves some time. Now, to be fair, like I said, they have made a valiant effort uh, in all other fronts using every other tool, you know, person that could participate uh, or would participate. Uh, in the last uh, couple of days, but uh, they're going around and around and around in a circle, and I don't see 
um, them making any, actually they're making negative headway. They're helping us finish off anything else they had left. <laughs> yeah, they're showing so, you some of their other things, the tricks they had up their sleeve and then we're able to take them out. Yeah, so yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, people. Uh, not enjoying all of the crazy phone calls and everything else I'm getting, but that's okay. Um, in, in those phone calls, Kim, has anyone said anything about coming to the table with you or all this is just about this this deal that they're working on and then we'll see what happens after that? Uh, I would say it has nothing to do with the deal. I think they uh, believe that I am oblivious and I don't know any of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think that uh, they have made valiant, like I have heard from people uh, that I have not heard from in a year, two years, three years, four years uh, calling me. I think they're looking to install a handler and see which one I would like. Mm. Yeah. Uh, they have reached out on my phone using old contacts that I know are dead, <laughs> uh, you know, have passed away uh, and an attempt to try to get me to say, oh, it's Bill you know, or whoever, you know, <laughs> I haven't heard from Bill in forever, you know, yeah. even though I had heard that that person passed away. Um, so yeah, it's been a valiant effort on their part, uh, trying to get me to help them, you know, that sort of thing. And, uh, I, I, I told them flat out, I'm staying out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry that you people all ran to Cheyenne and some undesirable people that you don't like are mm -hmm. there as well. Uh, but, that's not my problem. It sounds like a you problem. That's what that sounds like. That's what I said. <laughs> sounds like a you problem. What's what's in Cheyenne now? Because I remember us talking about that facility, at least the the tools and stuff they were using basically, you know, to harm humanity being wiped out. Is there still a bunker or something there that they're able to use? There is no esoteric uh, alien technologies. Uh, oh. There are no systems to speak of. There's no communication posts to the nether regions of the multiverse, so to speak. I mean, there's nothing, Okay. nothing there except for some people and your standard, you know, military type, you know, normal things that you would see, but nothing that they could use to hack into a banking system, install Trump bucks or FedNow or any of these other systems that they've tried to do repeatedly in the last couple of days. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm seeing go on. Uh, not a whole lot of ruckus around here, nothing to speak of other than just kind of trying to fend these people off. Uh, that was pretty much it. You mean the locals trying to fend people off or? Oh yeah, you... they've been calling everybody. Okay. Get her to, you know, X, Y, Z, you know. Uh, but as far as on our side of it, uh, you know, everything seems uh, minuscule. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of effort on our part. You know, there's a lot of attempts, you know, as far as, I am concerned they have groups of what I call industrial psychics, you know, that they, they will pound on you for a while. You know, they're more of like energetic attacks, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, no, nothing really, nothing to speak of. Nothing that can't be fixed, that's for sure. Okay, and so the deadline you said is tonight, sundown? Or when is the deadline? It is tonight, day? sundown, Eastern time, as I understand it. And then after that, all bets are off. So I'm assuming uh, they will willingly, this is what I see happening, if they hold up, they, you know, the problem with these people is they say a lot of things and their word is really no good. Exactly. Um, and I'm sure the cartels know that as well. Um, I mean, their word is never any good. I mean, yep. they will smile in your face and stab you in the back all in the same, you know, sentence. So are they actually going to do what they said they were going to do? In my opinion, I would be shocked. Either that or they're that concerned about the cartels coming after them. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only thing I could see that would make them hold to their word. Mm -hmm. So other than that, that is pretty much the update for Wednesday. It's been pretty quiet all around. Uh, there's, you know, 
very little going on out there. I mean, other than some threats of banking this and banking that, I'm not really seeing much of anything. Hmm. Okay. Quiet. Kind of quiet. Yeah. It's like, is this the calm before the storm? What's going on here? <laughs> I hate to use the word storm. I mean, Q, the storm is coming. Oh, yeah. It's been coming yeah. for like 10 years now, uh, yeah. you know, but well, um, up with another word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than your normal newsy chatter, governments, blah, blah, this people are going to do this. These people are going to do that. No one ever does really anything anyway. And, mm -hmm. and then we go around again. Um, no, I don't. It's pretty quiet. Okay. You know, on the normal people front, so to speak, energetically wise, physically, I'm not seeing a lot. So okay. that's pretty much it. We'll see what happens tonight. Anything to report on what source is up to the clearing, cleaning out, you know, uh, in that, in that realm, it's, it's kind of been uh, a layer by layer thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, there's been uh, a few things that have been going away. They're not really human things. It's more of a uh, old agreements, old bindings, quantum entanglements, that kind of thing. Uh, there's been a few mechanisms, a few more spheres, absolute spheres, that kind of thing that were tied to other agreements. Uh, there's a few things that we still found here and there, uh, per some agreements of Marduk. So it's kind of boring. I mean, it's not boring, but you know, it's boring to sit here and rattle off. You know, it, I would say, uh, there have been some things in Earth's orbit, Van Allen belt. Uh, were there any kind of disturbances that happened? Uh, yes. Uh, yesterday, very early in the morning, my time, uh, we we hit a dead man switch uh, somewhere, and um, it could have affected you personally. Uh, it was very early, like two o'clock in the morning yesterday. Uh, the alarm started going off, and it and it was basically a byproduct of the of the separation between light and dark matter, which then has to be filled in with light matter, so to speak. Uh, as that tour, there was an opportunity for something that was outside of time. So it's not something in a timeline. Uh, it's in a place that we call, um, it's like a zero field, a zero realm, mm -hmm. a zero density, uh, which existed outside of the alphaverse and omegaverse. Uh, there was a mechanism that was set up there by the destroyer, you know, obviously a, a long time ago, wow. uh, that if this ever happened, it would, in, it would then insert some things into the causal plane all, of all densities and, and then try to start mirroring out some dark matter and that kind of thing. So it was just taking advantage of that space that happens for a zeptosecond. Mm -hmm. It's really a short period of time. Uh, and then inserting itself in there, kind of like you stick your foot in the door to hold the door open when someone's yeah. trying to shut it in yeah. your face. Mm -hmm. uh, um, <clears throat> but it, it took a few hours to resolve. It's it's resolved. Uh, there's nothing left of that. So if you did feel a disturbance in the last couple of days, that could have been it. Um, other than that, it's been pretty well smooth sailing. Yeah. Uh, and, and crazy people going nuts with their industrial psychics. But other than that, no, that's it. Have you felt that from those guys? Oh, yeah. The psychics, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's, it could be, it has been worse when it's like alien technology that they have that they're using mm -hmm. to do something with. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it definitely has been worse. Uh, but uh, they you know, these, what little they got a hold of in the last couple of days wasn't enough to create a disturbance in, in people. So, you know, your atypical, you know, we all do positive energy work. We can do healing work. We can do lots of things. Well, they try to do the opposite, <laughs> put yeah. it that way. Yeah. Um, but we're okay. I mean, like you said, bouts of tiredness, that kind of thing we were talking about before we came on. Um, That's you know, I'm there was doing. a couple of points where, you know, they try to get you to stop, 
you know, you feel like a, an equal and opposite energy coming towards you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like pushes you around. It's not a, it's not a dizziness. It just feels like there's something that's pushing you. Yeah. But there's nothing there. Yeah. Uh, so it almost feels a little kind of dizzying a little bit, um, but not dizzy per se. Like, you know, I have an ear infection or something that makes you internally dizzy. You know, it's not a problem with your body. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel those things from time to time. There was one point yesterday uh, in the afternoon. It was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, granted, that's 12 hours of working yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess most people would be tired after that, but not like that. I mean, normally, you know, maybe, yeah, a little bit, maybe grab a cup of coffee or something like that, but nothing, not like my eyes are closing and I can't hold them open sort of thing. So, then you shield up and you block it and you push it back and you're okay, you know? Yeah. Or you take a nice nap if you can afford to do so. That's I just don't I have, I don't have the luxury. <laughs> it was right about that time. I was picking up my kids from school. I could barely keep my eyes open and I came back and I, you know, I lay down and I was out for two and a half hours at least, maybe three hours. That was crazy. We'll so. have to do one of those trading places things you know you I don't see know if those... I want to trade places with everything I know <laughs> when it gets I don't think anybody easier. wants to trade places with me for sure <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. stuck here on Gilligan's Island as I call it you know <laughs> came for the three-hour tour and exactly and a long time so I mean so as far as what happens next we're just kind of waiting to see I mean they're not gonna they're, there's no way that they can do whatever they've agreed to do, you know, with the no. cartel. There, it's not going to happen. No. So are you uh, personally, I think it was all a lie. I think they just wanted them to turn over whatever they had. Oh, uh, yeah, that's much more their MO. <laughs> yeah. Get them to turn over everything they had. Uh, yeah. And then obviously they could see if they were using it to make a valiant effort or not, you know. So I'm pretty sure that's what they wanted. They wanted uh, to get everything from them. I'm kind of surprised the cartel was even willing to do that because I feel like the cartel had the upper hand already, especially if these agents were running and, you know, seeking shelter and, you know, in, in these different locations. I'm kind of surprised the cartel even went along with this. Why would they hand over their stuff like, oh, see if you can use it for a little bit. It's like it's, there's, you know, it's what gives them their, you know. Well, I think in their mind, uh, this would have been quote unquote fair. You know, they don't have anything with which to perform left anymore. You know, that B word person, you know, and it's not blonde. It doesn't stand for blonde. B, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that they call me yeah. on the regular, you know, took everything. We don't yeah. have any chance of you know, we need to make it a fair fight, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know what they sold them, but I personally, they, there is nothing they could say to me. Jesus could come down from the clouds and demand I give them my key intelligence and military system, and I would laugh. I can tell you right now, it would never happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but each yeah. his own. Yeah. So, so we just we just wait until this uh, time expires and. Well, I'm not waiting on my end of it. I'm still working over yeah. here. You know, we're still, you know, seeing if there's anything left in the systems, anything we can clear, anything. You know, we're still moving forward to the no dark matter left program, uh, for sure. It is a cooperative effort on all fronts, um, and we are still doing what we. And I say we, I mean us, the coalitions, the archivists, the, you know, all of everybody that's here participating, because this is everybody's main goal. Everybody's main goal is not to announce that the, uh, who's president of the United States. Everybody's main goal on our side of it is to actually restore the planet, mm -hmm. restore matter throughout the multiverse. And like I said, it's cooperative effort. I am not the only one here. You know, yeah. like there's other people we work with or beings and whatnot all day long that are, everybody's working on the same program over here. The only beings in the entire multiverse that are not wanting that to happen are the deep state of the, mm -hmm. you know, of humans. That's it. Everybody else is on board. We're all, all making sure that we don't leave any more spaces. You know, that was a big, a little bit of a hiccup 
there for a minute. Um, so we had to develop other ways of doing that uh, together. And, um, you know, so it, we're just, that's what we're doing. We're, we're still continuing the, the, ch the shift, the changeover, making sure that there's nothing left coming at in or around the etheric cities of light. Uh, we found some stuff in Polaris uh and uh in all of the centuri you know they all use the greek alphabet right so you got alpha beta gamma kappa you know it's like joining a fraternity of of bad things in stars uh but we you know the so we we have found some stuff uh, mm -hmm. to answer your question uh it's but it's other than that one hiccup that was pretty much bad uh in cleaning that up that that was pretty much the only thing we've had that was I would what I would call a hiccup. Okay. And it was a collaborative effort on all parts, on all fronts, to clean it up. So we're not alone anymore. We're not trying to do this as humanity, you know, clawing, kicking and screaming. Exactly. And one day, you know, I know there's a lot of people where they look at governments, they look at, you know, what the deep state spraying, they look at all these different things and, and they think nothing is changing, nothing has changed. But one day you'll look back at this and it might take a year or two to, for you to do that once it's all completed. And you'll look back at this and you'll say, now I get it. Mm -hmm. You know, now I get why all that had to happen, why it took so long. You know, now you can start to see the future you know, by that point, you, you'll start to see the future of technologies and the way of new things and um, the way of natural manifestation and, and what that means. You know, everything, there's a divine plan out there. It's Source's plan. Yeah. We get, you know, bits and pieces of it, you know, and everybody gets their own little bits and pieces of it from time to time uh, of things you can personally do to help mm -hmm. this along. Mm -hmm. You know, you can listen, you can not listen. That's obviously your choice. But, you know, everything happens in its own time. Yeah. You know, it's it's a perfect timing of things. There's things that I've been working on, too, that it's like, OK, you know, you ever work on a project or work on something and you it just nothing seems to be going forward the right way. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of like hold yourself back for a little bit and you're like, then you get this epiphany one day and it's like, oh, that's how you solve the problem. This is it, you know, yeah. and it turns out so much better than it would have before mm -hmm. if you hadn't taken that step back. And if you don't take the step back, then you get pushback sometimes. Sure. So I've I've definitely seen a lot of that happening with different things we've been working on mm -hmm. uh, over the last you know couple of months. You know, and, and, and then I've gotten, you know, it's not time yet, you know, or don't say a word or, you know, those types of things when uh, sometimes uh, messages like that, that will come through or it's random, you know, just a random thing will come and it's like now, you know, but I, I can't help but feel the now urgency that comes sometimes is directly related to all the other pieces of the puzzle that are that source is putting together and moving together for mm -hmm. not only the benefit of humanity but the benefit of all yeah and what i see is you know i'll see movement over here for something movement over there for something and i can see how that one piece it's now time to click it into place mm -hmm. and then the whole puzzle is done at least that aspect of it yeah so I'm I'm forever grateful for that, uh, but I'm impatient, just like you. I did not get into the patient line, you know, at all in any way. Um, I have patience for certain things, infinite patience when it comes to children and animals and things like that. But when it comes to waiting for something, waiting in line, yeah. waiting, waiting for anything to come to fruition, I have no patience whatsoever. Yeah. So... No. Yeah, I, I often think about that. You're you're talking about how there's a lot of stuff happening now and sometime, you know, in the near future, we'll look back and be like, oh, all that was going on. I think about that a lot. I'm like, when we're actually able to tell the story properly yep. of what is happening in today, you know, what's happening today and what's been going on for several years now, 
I know I'm going to look back at that and be like, what was I doing at that time? Holy cow. I didn't know that was happening. And I was thinking this and you know what I mean? It's like, I can't wait for that to reveal itself because I know there's so much happening, but you know, so many times we just look at what's happening in our own life. We're like, nothing's changing, you know, and -and so-and-so is still mouthing off on the news and this is still going on. And I still have to, you know, pay taxes and we're, we're, you know, we're looking at this on a very small scale of what's happening in our our own individual lives. But I I look forward to the the time that we get the big picture of everything because there's a lot, there's a lot that's happening, even though we may not see it right now. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had events in your life too, that you like really wanted to date that person or you really wanted that job or you really wanted to move to this place and for some odd reason no matter what you did you couldn't get the job you know you broke up with your significant other you know whatever it was or you're trying to get pregnant and didn't get pregnant for another Mm -hmm. year or two or whatever you know whatever the circumstance might be you know that happens in your normal person life uh, you know you look back sometimes you know, five years later, 10 years later, and you're like, that's why. Mm-hmm. If that had worked out, oh my gosh, I would have been so unhappy. Yeah, that's true. You know, Source knows what he's doing. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to have a little trust and faith and in Source and, and reach out to him when you're frustrated, you know, reach out to him when you're wondering what's going to happen. But I can, I can tell you from my own standpoint, it's the only thing in this world or life, I should say, that has never let me down. Mm -hmm. I've always had the intuitive uh, part of me, whether I knew everything of where it was coming from. I mean, even from a young age and, you know, as I kind of grew up and sort of became more and more connected, I started figuring out what all those little lights were in my room and, Mm -hmm. but, or get out now or go down this hallway or, you know, having some, some certain skills and that kind of thing, especially they're, you know, they're especially heightened when I'm under threat. So, you know, all those are protection things and gifts uh, and your intuition is a gift. Yep. You know, you can fight source all you want to fight them and tell them that this is the man (laughs) or woman for you. But if it's not the man or woman for you, it is not the man or woman for you, you know, (laughs) and he'll make sure of it one way or another. And maybe, you know, I mean, there are some things that last for a time, too. Uh, You know, they don't last forever, you know, whether they're really good things or really bad things. But there's something that we've learned from every single one of those people that have come in and out of our lives or jobs we've had or, you know, maybe it was only meant to be a year or two job. Maybe you were just supposed to pick up and learn a few things, you know, along the way uh, so that you could move on to something brighter and better for yourself. That's a good point because I feel like we as humanity feel like things should last as long as possible. And if it doesn't last for an extended period of time, that it wasn't successful. That's not true (laughs) because we're all here to learn. If you can learn that lesson, whatever that is in a short period of time, wouldn't you rather do that? Does everything have to be extended and be long and dramatic if it's, if it's not supposed to be, you know, but yeah, or, I mean, who knows, you know, we, we do like, we are pack animals, you know, Mm -hmm. our humans are pack animals. We like to be in groups. We like to be accepted by groups. We like to uh, have friends. We like to, you know, do things with people, Mm -hmm. you know, not all people like that, but I mean, a lot of people that in in general, that is our nature, unless we've been so burned you know, then we just, you know, crawl into a hole and read books all the time or something, you know, but there's people that do the, do that as well. But for the most part, that's kind of who we are. Uh, and then you have all of this religious stuff that comes out that says, you know, in certain areas of the world, more so than others, there's no such thing as you, you don't get divorced. You stay married for the, you know, I don't care if your spouse is beating you, yeah. you stay married to the end of days and you agree to do this. And, You know, and so you're going to do it, you know, and it's some guy or some lady that's telling you that you're an evil person because you're not, you know, Um, and it's really not fair. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a friend of mine that was in a, in a difficult spot in, in her marriage once and, and uh, pretty much her husband would beat her almost every day. 
So that was kind of the situation she was in. But because she lived in the Bible Belt of the United States, that's not acceptable to get divorced. And she's like, well, I made a promise to God and to this person. And and I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, you're a parent. You have kids. Mm -hmm. Let's take your daughter as an example. Your daughter ends up, you know, she was very young at the time, about 10 years old. I said, she grows up, she gets married, and her husband's beating her every day. What are you going to do? Now, I know this person well. She's like, well, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to pull her out of there and I'm going to beat the crap out of him and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, she went on and on and on for a while. And I said, okay, well, your father doesn't want you to be in that situation either. And I'm talking about her to her about God, right? This mm. is what she says. Not so she says God. So that's fine. Um, so why would you think that, you know, he doesn't love you enough to say that this You know, it's just all programming. We've been programmed in so many different ways to accept certain things. And I, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you know, I'm not saying that that's a pleasant experience for anyone to go through in any way. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's when it's time when you make a decision to to stop something like that from happening the doors open for you. You'll always have a place to be. Yeah. You'll always have a place to go. You'll always have food on the table for your kids. Even though you might feel alone, you know, you wouldn't have that intuitive ability to say, hey, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't time to go. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing you, how things line up when the timing is right. I've had that yep. in a few different areas of my life where I've been like, it's it's time to, to do this. I just knew it's time to do this. And yep. then it's like, Things that normally would take super long to do because it involved other people or whatever were just super easy. And I was like, wow, that <laughs> I was like, something's wrong here. It's happening too easily because we expect that kind of hardship, you know. But when the timing sure. is right, easy peasy. And it's a source thing. Yeah. You know, if source good. tells you to do something, you know, and your intu intuition is telling you to do something, yep. you know, and you're not clouding it with your own thoughts, opinions and your own knowledge, you know, well, I can't move to that city. I don't even like that kind of weather, you know, right. but then you end up going anyway because you're listening to your intuition and yeah. the job falls in line and the house falls in line and the place to live. And mm -hmm. maybe you meet, you know, the love of your life while you're there. I mean, who knows? Yep. You know, what what can happen when you listen to your intuition? But as far as myself, there's been many times when I've been kind of sitting by myself, you know, just maybe enjoying some time outside or something and thought about events that have happened in my life. I mean, not just this kind of stuff. I'm talking about normal people things. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm really source knew what he was doing there. Yeah. You know, he knew that that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> You know, no matter how much I wanted that relationship or that job or that move or that, you know, he just knew that wasn't supposed to happen. Right. So I'm eternally grateful, you know, for those kind of things. Um, yeah. So now I don't even question it anymore. I'm like, yeah, I, that had to happen. And I had to learn. There's a lot of things I had to learn, even some things that y people would say, wow, I can't believe that you had to talk to that person or be in that place or, you know, had gone, gone through that experience. But, you know, it was trial by fire, really. And I learned a lot, a tremendous amount from every single experience that has happened mm -hmm. during the time that I've had this, I guess you would call it a job. Yeah. So I'm grateful and thankful. Mm -hmm. So now I can help all of you. Like, yep, that would not be a possibility. And I can tell you all the reasons why. <laughs> and you know, and maybe save you some time and some grief that, you know, that I had. <laughs> exactly. All right, Miss Sunny. Well, you have a lovely day and I will see you on Friday. Sounds good. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Sunny. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. That's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. 
We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so together we can share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.